Obadiah, beginning with verse 10. For violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captive his forces, when foreigners entered his gate, and cast lots for Jerusalem. Even you were as one of them. For a few moments. Uh -huh. On today. I want to talk to you and encourage you from the subject. Do the right thing. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Do the right thing. And for a thing, I want to give you Obadiah expresses God's sharp disproof to the Edomites for failing to do what was right. So no matter what we experience or endure, the disciple should be committed to doing the right thing according to the word of God. Are y'all with me on this morning? As a people who God has called out of the void of nothingness into his marvelous light of everything. We must be committed to do what, doing what is righteous according to God's holy specifications. <laughs> As a people, who were once dead spiritually due to our voluntary association with sin. And now by faith have experienced the new birth. And have the light of life because of Jesus the Christ. We must voluntarily pledge to walk in righteousness even in the midst of disagreement and hostility. Are y'all with me on today? As a people who were once lost in the abyss of hopelessness, but have now been retrieved by Christ, we must be devoted to holiness. The holiness of the true and living God, even when we feel like we've been done wrong. When we've been rejected, and even in the midst of hurt. Yeah. As a people who were once willingly and joyfully at odds with God due to our sin and our love of it. But by the grace of God and mercy are now children of the Most High God who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Because of this, we must be dedicated to the cause of holding up the precepts of Almighty God even when we don't feel like it. I want us to understand on today that every day will not be a sunny day. Every day will not be filled with accolades from the crowd and pats on the back from your friends. Every day will be overflowing with roses and petunias. However, understand on today, beloved, there are going to be some storms. There are going to be some disagreements even in the household of faith. There are going to be some disconnection 
And some weeds are going to grow up in your spiritual garden. But no matter what we endure, no matter what we go through, no matter if we are talked about, we have been called to do the right thing. Yes, yes, yes. The songwriter says, my faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. See, right when I'm struggling, my faith looks up to thee. When folk don't agree with me and I feel discouraged, my faith looks up to thee. When people reject me and walk away from me to come back no more, my faith looks up to thee. When I'm weary and I'm destitute, my faith looks up to thee. When I don't feel like loving like I should, when I don't feel like acting like I should, when I don't feel like talking like I should, when I don't feel like serving like I should, when I don't feel like leading like I should, Jesus gets me in line because my faith looks up to the now, hear me, while I pray. Oh Lord, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy. Thine. My brothers and my sisters, in the late 80s, Spike Lee produced, he wrote, produced, and starred in a movie called Do the Right Thing. The movie was set in Best Eye, Brooklyn. Lee's fictional story brings light to racial tension that can and does arise in a place where we are called to dwell together in unity. Basically, Brother Woods of different races in Brooklyn should have been committed to dwelling together. But see, they allowed their differences. Y'all hear me? They, call, they allowed their differences to cause distrust, dysfunction, and disconnection in their community. They allowed their issues to cause turmoil in their place of commonality. We have to understand that even in the household of faith, if there is no commitment to God, if there is no commitment to unity, distrust, dysfunction, and disconnection will infiltrate our community and tear down what we built. In the movie, the problem got so bad. And let me throw this in parenthetically to us. These were folk who had lived together for decades. And they allowed their differences to get the best of them and to tear them apart. Needless to say, nobody came out of this victorious. They did not come out triumphant my brothers and my sisters well. Dr. Connor because they failed to do the right thing. Come on. In our text, this is the literary form or prophetic revelation from God through his prophet Obadiah. When the prophet stated when they were invaded, 
you stood aloof, which means distant or detached. And you acted like one of Israel's enemies. In this verse, Reverend Slater, God rebukes the Edomites. Not for act, actually, actively doing wrong, but for failing to do that which was right. We must understand, as those who have been set free from the burden of sin, we have an obligation set before us to live right, to love right, and to walk right. As followers of Christ, we have the daunting task of striving together in the unity of Christ as we attempt to abide by this mandate. We find ourselves dealing with the mindset and the personality that we have. As we strive to navigate the mindset and personalities of one another. See, we are called to minister to and minister with one another, but we find ourselves focusing on our differences many times. When we get this mindset, we tend to look at what we desire and how we want things to be without taking consideration of what God wants and what's best for the unity of the body of Christ. In those moments of weakness, we tend not to always put our best foot forward from a biblical perspective. And that leads us to do what is contrary for the benefit of our desires and our pride. Uh -uh. And let me say this on today, we're all guilty yes. of this. Yes. But God is calling us to do what is right according to the book. Yes. Okay. And we observe what the prophet is saying. We understand that Jacob and Esau were brothers. And they did not always get along. Just like the brothers didn't get along. Their descendants, even though they were family, did not see eye to eye. But God is saying that we are family in Jesus' name. And because we are a family in Jesus' name, there's an obligation for the people of God to do the right thing when it comes to one another. Okay. See, we're going to endure frustration. We are not always going to agree. There will be different points of view, but no matter what, <coughs> in our personal lives or in this church, Reverend Slater, we are family. And family needs to love one another. Amen, and we have to do our best. Yes, Lord. Whether right That's true. to do the right thing. Yes. See, when the Babylonians showed up, mm -hmm. Edom didn't act like family. <laughs> Amen. Think it was. They acted like they were one of the foreign in the babies. They failed to do the right thing at the right time. See, on today, God is calling us to a higher level of service and a higher level of relationship with him and with one another. And our relationship efforts should be fueled by the knowledge of him Amen. and not our personal feelings. 
So how do we? As brothers and sisters in Christ, do the right thing when it's tempting due to our involvement with each other to do what's wrong. I want y'all to listen to me closely. Number one, there must be a commitment to love and a commitment to love. I'm going to let that sink in. There must be a commitment to love because God is love. And he or she who dwelleth in God dwelleth in love. So there must be a commitment to God and a commitment to loving one another. And we are committed to love and committed to love even in the midst of situations that may cause us to disconnect. Number two, we must strive to be compassionate even though we may be different. And we also must be compassionate when we feel folk don't deserve our compassion. Let me throw this in parenthetically. God is patient and compassionate with us. So we are to be patient and compassionate with one another. Because sometimes we feel like folk don't deserve our benevolence. Yeah. If folk don't deserve our kindness, but we've been called to live right, to love right, to walk right, and to be compassionate to one another. Let me, let, let me say this. I know with some folks they have done some things you don't like. Uh-uh. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen lights. <laughs> but just like they done stuff that you don't like. Right. You done stuff that they don't like. Just like they get on your nerves, you get on their nerves too. But when push comes to shove, we want God's grace, mercy, and compassion on us. So we should be willing to bestow upon our brothers and our sisters the same thing that we want God to bestow to us. So point number one, be committed to love and committed to love. Number two, we must strive to be compassionate even though we are different. And last but not least, no matter what we endure, in the midst of striving to walk in relationship with our brothers and our sisters. We should be filled with the desire to do what is godly. And we must be motivated by the aid of the Holy Spirit to simply have a desire to be a help and not a hindrance. My brothers and my sisters, we can do the right thing even in the midst of difficult situations. We can do the right thing. Even when we don't see eye to eye. We can do the right thing. Even in the midst of our differences. We can do the right thing. 
in the midst of the unforeseen. We can do the right thing. When we feel like all hope is gone, we can do the right thing. When we can't serve with the same enthusiasm that we used to, we can do the right thing. Simply because the Lord is our strength. It is the Lord that motivates. It is the Lord that energizes. It is the Lord that renews. It is the Lord that encourages. I hope somebody's hearing me on today. Because I need ten folks to be dedicated to spending some time with the Lord. Because it's the Lord that makes us sure-footed. It's the Lord that increases our courage. It is the Lord that gives us holy boldness. When we trust in God, there is great joy. Not in the circumstance, but simply in God himself. Because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves me. He keeps me. Beloved, he's the one that I adore. Because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. See, my brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage you to do what is right. So we are to be committed, compassionate, and ready to endure. There will be dark times, even though we are children of the light. But we are to be committed, compassionate, and ready to endure. Sometimes we ain't going to be liked. We won't be accepted. But we are to be committed, compassionate, and ready to endure. We will do folks right, and they will do their best to do us wrong. We are to be committed, compassionate, and ready to endure. There are times we won't be honored, we won't be appreciated, but we are to be committed, compassionate, and ready to endure. There will be days when you feel like throwing in the towel. There will be days when you feel like giving up. But stay committed. Stay compassionate. Be ready to endure. I am weak and I need that strength, that power to help me in my weakest hour. Let me through the darkness that I face to see. Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. But I feel like giving up. Leave me when I feel frustrated. Leave me when I feel disconnected. Leave me when I don't feel like loving right. Leave me when they scandalize my name. Leave me when I'm doing well but getting weary. Leave me, my brothers, my sisters. There will be disagreement. There will be distractions. There will be issues. There will be times that we need to reconcile. But understand, no matter what, there must be loyalty to God in times of misdirection. There must be loyalty to God. When I'm irritated and discombobulated, there must be loyalty to God. When I'm broken, I'm sick, and when I feel lost, there must be loyalty to God. When my money seems funny, when my change seems strange, there must be loyalty to God. Because he's a road truck, enjoying his stuff. And the hills are hard to climb. See, I started out a long time ago. There's no doubt. After 10 years in my mind, I've decided to make Jesus my choice.
We need to stay connected to God. To do the right thing. We have to take time to be restored, refreshed, and revived. To do the right thing, we need a fresh wind. We need more peace. More love. More joy. We need more determination. My brothers and my sisters, we have to become more resilient. We have to ask God for a greater focus as we seek greater direction. And to do the right thing. We must have the strength to endure. So how do we do it? We must be committed to love. And we must be committed to love. That means there must be a commitment to the truth and the living God. Not just on Sunday, but every day. <coughs> Ask the Lord to use you and simply have his dying own way. There must be a commitment to love God and to love one another. We're always not going to see eye to eye. Sometimes we got to agree to disagree. But we must strive to be compassionate in those times when there's friction. And last but not least, no matter what we endure, because we all endure hurt, disappointment, Rejection as we strive to walk in relationship with one another. But no matter what other folks may do to you, build your hopes on things eternal and strive to do what is godly in the sight of the Lord and always be motivated. By the aid of the Holy Spirit. Let them in and let them work. To be filled with the desire to help. Tell your neighbor, do the right thing. Tell your other neighbor, do the right thing. Point to yourself. Say, self, do the right thing. The Lord of the church of Rome.